Hi, how's it? Uh, what's going on? We're in the next part now. So in the previous part, I was telling you about this guy who committed suicide in my dream. And it was a middle-aged white man. I don't think the race has, has anything to do with it, but definitely his age. Why was he middle-aged? God was showing me um, basically that witchcraft, ne, adoration of it, especially for people who want to get rich quick, really young, it catches up with them around middle age. This man looked like he could have been like 47 or something, maybe 50. Uh, and he ended his life because he was exhausted with the lifestyle. And he was also living in fear. Remember, um, I said that his pants were yellow and yellow always represents fear in my dreams. He was living in fear. Or fear of what? The system. The system. Like when you have had your eyes opened, I spoke about how it is that uh, dabbling in sorcery, dabbling in dark arts is like eating off the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. There's no turning back, even when you turn to Jesus, okay? Even when you give your life to Christ afterwards, if at all you've ever dabbled with witchcraft, you open your eyes to a dark world that where you see some creepy stuff and you get away, you succeed to do things to people that you never for the life of you ever fathomed are possible to be done in this waking space. It is a supernatural means to acquire what, what you want in a world where most people are very time and space material focused based on you know things that you can touch and see and witchcraft introduces people to that which they can't touch and see but nonetheless move it in the spirit realm that opens you up to a world basically a, a intergalactic world it opens you up to a vast expanse of possibilities while you are just this meager minuscule tiny just mere mortal you are dealing with a, a cosmic world that you never thought existed and now you know therefore the level of yeah I'll be bad. No. I opened my what more do you want? I'm busy. The level of paranoia that uh comes. What I I don't know. What car? Your car. The level of paranoia that comes in uh, people that, like, I just, I hate getting distracted. I just, uh, leave me alone. I'm not good with that. Like, I'm just not, okay? There are people who can work with 20,000 distractions and be okay. I get aggressive. Anyway, whatever. Uh, it's because I'm a thinking talker. I told you guys that. And if people interrupt me when I'm thinking, I lose my train of thought. And that's very important for me since mine is a thinking ministry. I gotta think through what I've seen. Anyway, moving on. I was speaking about the level of paranoia that dwells in people who are involved in the occult. They are extremely paranoid uh, and they feel like everything is coming for them. Every fluff ball on their skin feels like a tarantula. So to live like that, that's not a life. It is not a life. And for those who never ever encounter the redeeming power of Jesus Christ, and so therefore understanding that in this cosmic space that they dabbled in that is nefarious, there is a mighty source that can conquer everything. And if you run to him, you're safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to him and they're safe. In the absence of getting to that conviction, you will think that everything is coming at you. Everybody's after you. You will literally have hauntings crawling up your walls which is the reason why occult practitioners that repent to christ are so inform informative and they're so powerful as as a, a, a christians because they now have a redemption freedom from that fear of what they've seen however because they've seen it they don't entirely recover they're always just kind of paranoid schizophrenic in the sense that they're always just looking out for witchcraft more so than any other person can look out for it because they know what they dabbled in and how incredibly dark it is and what they also did to Christians when they were in that world when they were still operating it's your distractions I can't do that. when they were operating in that world they 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 knew what they used to try to do to believers so every time they get an attack a spiritual attack we're always getting spiritual attacks we're always talking about them they wear us out etc they calculate likely what it might be where it came from the source of it you know it i think their lives are just a little bit harder as believers it, it, it like they have eaten of the knowledge of the tr uh, uh, tree of good and evil of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil like squared you know uh, a little bit of a bova fight version of it like adam and eve ate the first they ate like a an even deeper version of it and now they have knowledge of wickedness that even we as believers in christ that have never dabbled just can never
ever understand. So the level of war that they make as well in the spiritual realm is more exorbitant. Like, ask any Satanist that has repented from the occult. They just keep on getting hassled by the occult world. Through and through. Go ask John Ramirez. Go and ask him. Sylvia Watwati, go and ask these people. They just keep on getting knocked on the door off by the Oka. They keep on getting, they keep on attempting to, con to to recruit them again. They know more. They have a vaster knowledge of the occult or of the spirit realm than we do. So really, ignorance is bliss in this regard. Like if you don't dabble in the occult, you are likely going to be a happier Christian or a less paranoid Christian. And as a human being that is not in Christ, you are just you might end up dying because of your paranoia. You like they keep on also trying other mm, and like sides of the occult basically like so if they've tried voodoo they are gonna try santeria or they're gonna try sangoma or just in case it's more powerful because they know because they, they keep on fighting each other in the cosmos so they since they get overwhelmed by certain other witchcraft while not getting overwhelmed by certain other witchcraft they wonder so who's the strongest sangoma to visit or what is the strongest type of sorcery to practice so they just never stop they get deeper and deeper into this darkness this rabbit hole and unless christ pulls them out of it their likely demise will be one where they're either a prolific satanist that is no longer having a normal life and they can't be kind or friendly to anybody or they kill themselves and in my dream this one killed himself he committed suicide because one he was without proper relationships anymore he was paranoid all the time didn't trust anybody life was not as sweet as it used to be and lastly just the wealth of understanding of how dark things can get he couldn't deal with it anymore apparently allegedly according to the holy god of, of israel so it's not apparent it's real um where it is that witchcraft tends to catch up with people is around middle age apparently that is the the height of suicide committers people who end their lives because of having dabbled with sorcery in the beginning of their lives they acquire all of these things through it and then they die suicide deaths there was a man in my organization that committed suicide that was around middle age a black guy um and he was constantly just all up in the bible and what have you at his death but it is suspected that he was also involved in dark things and he plunged to his demise it takes lives even of teenagers okay it takes lives of people in their 20s but apparently the height the the, the biggest the, mortal, the the highest mortality rate is in the middle aged so people from around my age going up all the way up until maybe like 58 or whatever that that those are the ones that are committing suicide in their big numbers um and my fear with that now is my afflictus people who have hurt me uh middle-aged guys they're headed for you know 40 45 50 60 okay so 60 is no longer middle age it's just elderly that's it um yeah no guys it's my peers i can't even begin to describe to you how many friends and family members have put witchcraft on me and this dream just opened my eyes up to the fact that many of them are headed towards that age where witchcraft is catching up with them and they're going to become morbidly depressed and kill themselves either because they are reprobate or entirely cast out from ever going to jesus because they blasphemed the holy spirit or they don't trust jesus because herein lies the deal I'm a Christian, been born again since 2011, hallelujah, let us praise the king of the universe for that. However, despite being a Christian, look at my life. I appear to have fallen from grace. I have latched on to Christ. I keep on getting witches saying things like Jesus Christ onlyism, onlyism. And I spoke about that in my previous series where they mock me because I only do Christ. That I won't let go of Jesus. Me holding on to him for dear life has made them be like, what's that done for her? The Lord has handed them over to their reprobate mind by making them believe that I, that I am bewitchable. I'm a child of God. I'm going through a test. That's all that this is. And after I've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace will restore me to everything I need lacking in nothing. They don't get that because they've never studied the scriptures. But they were dabbling not only with um, the occult, but with Jesus. They were on the fence serving two masters. And when I keep, or when, but when people like me keep saying things like, Christ is going to set me free. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I'm going to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the path of the enemy. And I'm seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus. Nothing shall by any means harm me. When I keep on quoting all these scriptures, they are like, but it's been a decade. But it's been, you know what I mean? They're like, but it's you. What's happened for you, Garabo? You wanted a husband. Prayers ain't hurt because we blocked it. 
We successfully blocked you getting married. We successfully blocked you getting those cute kids. We successfully blocked you getting your degree. We successfully blocked you from thriving in corporate. We successfully blocked your YouTube channel. We successfully blocked your Facebook page. We successfully blocked, like, they just look at my life as a, like, successful witchcraft strategy embarked on that, like, whoa, I fell because they tipped me like a domino. They don't see Job in me. They see a defeated, um, cosmic warrior. They see me as a person that has been making war with, you know, Ephesians 6, the armor of God. But I felt, but I, I lost. They, they are looking at me as Achilles, whose heel they struck. You might be strong. Jesus might have some power, girl, but obviously he's not the be-all and end-all. Because why in the world are you still suffering so much? Every spell I cast on you works. They look at the long-suffering of a Christian and the fortitude of a believer as evidence that Christ is not the only way. They second-guess the Bible. They don't deny there is power in Christ because they can see Christians walking in it, but they think that his power is limited and that the Bible is not voracious. They believe that the Bible is not the be-all and end-all. They believe that albeit there being power in Christianity, it's not the power and that there are other things you need to sort of supplement your Christian thing with that's why they do both ancestors and Jesus they go to church by a tandaza because uh, they can see that there's power in prayer where two or three are gathered there there he is with us uh, you reap what you sow biblical principles they can see that they work in life but so too have they observed occult magic working so for those reasons for those reasons when then the occult exasperates them when, when it wears them out when it makes them feel like there's nothing sweet about life anymore they cannot even look at Jesus because according to them he's not the be-all and end-all of a power if anything he's kind of weak in comparison to the rest because I have a friend that held on to Jesus and I bewitched the living daylights out of her life and she never rose again they look at my life and they're like I would love to go to Jesus and get some healing he does say come to me all of you who labor but and I heavily laden and I will give you rest but I mean obviously he is not the only power because look at my Christian friend who stuck to Christ only she is still in squalor y'all need to understand how God judges the wicked you are in trouble he hands you over to your Prepared man so that you may believe the lie. He gives you a strong delusion. So a suffering saint is a tested saint, not a defeated or a conquered saint. Long suffering time basically proves the Bible true. That's why it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the one who is caught in a snare with sosari sometimes is not given the full testimony of a Christian. They don't get to see Garabo turn 40 and finally get married, finally get her child, finally get her businesses. Finally, they just die at 39 and a half. Because Garabo's tester, she walked with Christ only and look at her. And so in that frustration, there is a deep despair. How out of all of these many gods, since they become poly polytheistic, out of these many gods, who am I supposed to turn to to find true peace? Because Jesus is, you know, not as strong. He's substandard. He's not, he's not sufficient. He is a power, but he's not the power. And I don't want to live Garabo's life. So they... Don't even turn to Jesus. God says, if anybody turns to me, I will likewise not turn away. They don't even turn to Jesus because apparently Jesus has failed Carabo. And so they commit suicide before they can even cry to Jesus. They, they, they don't trust God anymore. They don't trust Jesus. They've opened a, a rabbit hole. They've opened a can of worms. They've opened Pandora's box. And now it has daunted them. It has daunted them. Now they are beguiled with sorcery and they don't trust Jesus because of how it appears to have worked against his true servants. That man committed suicide in my dream for those reasons and God was showing me what eventually happens around middle age to witches who went and grabbed their careers and their fame and they ran with it. Around middle age, they commit suicide. Even though Christ has yawned a door, gawked it at them, they can't even enter in because they've afflicted so many Christians in a way that appeared successfully that they don't think Christ is the only way so they just end their lives. They are nihilistic that way because they believe there's nothing that happens after the death because if Christ was not truthful in saying that he will never leave nor forsake saints, he can't possibly possibly be true when he says there is a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity in that place where the worm dieth not and that's where they're going where the smoke of their torment will rise up forever they don't even believe scriptures about hell not that much anyway because they have caused doubt in themselves against the scriptures by being so afflicting against Christians because their demons made them that way they cause a doubt of the true God of the universe because of getting into the occult and I'm trying to snatch those gangsters out from the flames of hell to make them understand that he is God and he got me even though it looks like he don't y'all have been deceived this is the grand deception for you. Come out from it and go back to Jesus only because he is the only way or plunge to your suicide because you made yourself not believe him. Next part.